Edit that out. Okay. Ah, no, the first one is always. Okay, okay. Welcome to the Rollis Podcast, episode 2! I will be your host, Callum, and this time, I got two guests with me. I've got Zani. Hello, everybody. And I've got Akadosh. Hello, guys. Okay, so we are here sitting down, waiting for a pizza delivery, and our plan for the evening is to record this podcast, and we're gonna play Smash Up, which is... Uh, mighty fine game. So Maybe. I don't know. I don't know the game. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, just to prove that how oh, awesome this game is, it's quite easy. I'm just gonna say what I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play zombie dinosaurs. I'm gonna play robots, but robots with special magic power. And I'm gonna be playing um, ninja aliens or alien ninjas. Up to you. Martian ninjas, actually. Martians, they come from Mars? Yeah, uh, precise. Oh, that, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, it's, pro- it's proper Martian. They're small grids. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. They definitely look the type. Okay, I'm going to start because I'm a hard-working man, uh, waking up early, while the others <laughs> are go from uh, lazy to super lazy. Uh. <laughs> okay. I'm staying late at home. Which kind of... Oh, wait, five. Five, five. 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 Okay, five. five. And if you um, have no creatures in your hand... So it's easy to recognize as the one with a number on the upper left. You can mulligan. Mulligan. Oh, that means... That's the name you of... take five new cards, five, four new cards, and then you start with three magic, new cards. Right? And so that's magic. I did play magic. Oh, that's yeah. Go know your classics. Right? Uh-huh. Don't know magic. I, I know magic, but I never played it, so I didn't know You what... never played magic? Oh, actually, I know what a mulligan is, because they, go- they call that the same in Earthstone. Yeah, that's ah, right. But it's not coming it's all so, from magic. I think it's also a hairstyle, yeah. but you don't want to have it. No, that's a mullet. Oh, yes, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what, rat stay. I don't know what happens <laughs> if you go to the addresser and ask, I will have the mullet again. <laughs> so we have three bases first, three bases, and we need to actually invade those bases, everyone into them. Let's go ahead and try this. Ooh, Raptor! My, my combat Raptor is going to the mall in Rhodes Plaza. Okay. And so he's uh, hunting in the park. Reminds me of the movie, right? And I'm not going to play a uh, card, so I'm just going to pick two. And... You have teeth, but I'm robot, so I don't care. I put, I put a little Zabot and another one, because they're coming... You can play two creatures? Yeah, yeah that's, um, that's the effect. effect of the so cards. you can still play an action. Yeah, but I, I will not do it. Well, pick your card. It's not time for an action yet. So that's very nice. So you see here the power of the uh, Martian. I play the collector that allows me to actually... Um, Nothing, because that does not apply to anyone. No, for yes, three or less. Three or less. Okay, so every creature is above Oh, three or less, sorry. Three or less. So I remove a um, a robot, as I see as a big competitor. If you want. And the plan for my invasion uh, does it just go... started. Oh, in the hand, okay. Yeah, in yeah. the hand. And I play an action, the tracking bean, on your second robot, just to learn you a lesson. Thank you. To teach. To teach you. Okay, did you... You listened just to the start of the previous podcast. Yeah. So, first impression. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> the impression of the first podcast. Um, yeah, I was not 100% focused. Um, but uh, it was fun. I liked a little music in the middle. Uh, there was a different interview with different uh, guy, different topics. Actually, I was kind of impressed by the quality of the song yep. in the theater, I guess. Wow. Uh, just before Ant-Man. <laughs> just find it. Actually, after asking my question, I find it super rubbish narcissist. <laughs> 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 oh, that was very good. Yeah. <laughs> Quality no, no, that was, that was very bad, actually. And, and I don't even know when I hear... Don't I mean, say that he's paying for the pizza. Yeah, maybe <laughs> by the time uh, after I've recorded that and issued the first yeah. episode, who is not online yet, <laughs> I will have loads of comments to so, uh, to go along what you say or to do this. Actually, you ask the question because you need time to think about your next move, right? That's a trick. Uh, it's called diversion. Exactly. Okay, I'm gonna do that with my action. In the mall of Rhodes Plaza, my creatures are not affected by your actions. Oh, 
So that's fun. Mm-hmm. Does it matter? I still have someone. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a, a marauder zombie uh, stalking around along my combat raptor. Uh, it tells me that I can look at this. Oh no, I put it back and then I. When I pick What's the starting age for this time? 12. 12. 12. Okay, okay, okay. And that's it. So now you feel so bad if you don't understand the rules, alright? Yeah. <laughs> My friend, it's a bit complicated of a game to discuss at the same time. So maybe Okaido would be. Uh, Tokaido. Tokaido, yeah. Sorry. And that's the same to me. Up to move and find out. But maybe no game. <laughs> 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 or maybe like, you know, tic tac toe or something. Tokaido is supposed to be super simple. Ah, this is simple idea. Yeah. Okay, let's. Continue and see uh, what's so, going on. So, my you know what? Is, yeah. You know what? Let's let you think about what you're gonna do, and then we can talk in the meantime. So I know now. what I will do. Oh, you know he knows do. already. Woo. Robots is about you do stuff and they just multiply themselves. Yeah, actually, it's quite a they clone. Cool. They clone themselves. Yeah, that, that's, that's what of... I was seeing actually. So actually, you're the only one playing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but just there. I mean, you need that, right? Drinking the beer. What's the story with the beer? Before the story of the beer, maybe it's time for a little song. Okay. So what should I play first? Something quirky, completely weird. Tension. Absolutely. What? <laughs> tension <laughs> in the place. So no, robots ten- invade the world. No <laughs> okay, tension or weird or both? both. If you find a bug at the same time. Yeah, knowing free music archive, I think I can find something weird and robotic. Around like a mastodon, robot pants. Feel the beat, move my seat, robot pants. My robot pants need to scream, robot pants. I'm a cyborg, Marishnikov, robot pants. With a built in Kalashnikov, robot pants, robot pants. I can't dance without my robot pants, robot pants, robot pants. I can't dance without my robot pants. I'm a cyborg, Marishnikov, robot Robot pants. Dance floor is a vital ground. Robot pants. I got my pants on now. Robot pants. Robot pants. I can't dance without my robot pants. Robot pants. Robot pants. I can't dance without my robot pants. Robot pants. Robot pants. I can't dance without my robot pants. Yeah, I guess there I put. Should I play now or do you tell a story about the beer? Well, play, you can play, play, play any. I mean, okay. there is no story with the beer. There's, There's no story. Why, why do I drink this beer then? I know it's some friends that uh, give it to me, but I'm thinking that they just bought it in London and just like this because it's an English beer, right? So, so local. I don't know. You probably. didn't even tell us the, the name of the beer. There's no name. It has a label on it. Oh, so the, Anna, and it's <laughs> the thing is, Xani just pulled out the, the, the beer bottle from the sink and it's just got like a big X on it. <laughs> like, it's very... So it's just LX from Santana Brewery. Okay, well. Good aim, 4.6%. Okay, well, I guess I will find their Twitter account. I don't know who they are, I don't know who they live, but I will find their Twitter account and I will t- tweet them yeah. this podcast. <laughs> Can you do some advertisement like this? <laughs> well, I would have a German brunch place which invited me to go there, so... Nice! Um, I am um, calling my Supreme Commander to actually back up my collector. Mm. He's actually the strongest one in the lot. Uh-huh. And then again, your Enchantress go back to your uh, hand. You know that you can take this in order to play it again and play the thing again. You can. I can play it. I can play it. Two characters. No, no, but like, I, I mean, this kind of uh, thing to put the yes. creature back in your hands sometimes <laughs> can be used for your own creature. You know that you're playing against him and <laughs> telling him <laughs> how to do that. And that's it for me. Okay. Uh, my turn. 
Don't we trust you. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, we just need to have less than 10 cards, right? Yep, okay. Um, so, me, right? Uh, we'll play an apprentice sorcerer over there. Okay, uh, well, uh, Akadosh, that's your turn. Akadosh, by the way, is a dreadful pseudonym. Why? It's, <laughs> it's pseudonym you should be easier to pronounce yeah. than <laughs> your real <laughs> name. Except if your name is Joe. It's a uh, name. It's actually the full name is Hakadosh Beraka, which is the god to the world to, uh, to come in your opinion. So, uh, the world ends. This one, one, I would be, I mean, it would be the god for some. But hack, cook it, hack if you want. That could, could make sense. Like friendly, uh. Maybe the rule is you need to play or talk, but not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I think the important thing is that we talk, although I'm not sure what we say is interesting. Okay, so I don't really know the rules, so I don't know what I'm doing. The second collector, get your um, apprentice out. Why? Why are you always me? And then I um, assassinate the, uh, I don't know who, assassinate the robot, so I don't know why, because it's fun, which means at the end of the turn, it's destroyed. I'm still not sure about this game. Can never stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I like it. It's just that. Wait, we, we need to be focused on this. Yeah. yeah. So Tokaido. To yeah, yeah. Or? I can do Tokaido. We can cut here and oh, Tokaido. Okay. 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 Sorry, guys. Wrong idea. So we are on a learning curve. <coughs> I'm gonna edit here and magically we're gonna play Tokaido. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a song. A song that really. Uh, um, Sad song. The end song. Yeah, sad exactly. Song, sad. The end story. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, sad <laughs> song. <laughs> Concept in Tokaido to win is to have a little bit of everything. Yes, that's the, that's the thing. The game is Tokaido now. Hopefully, that will be quite uh, and more appropriate to the deep conversations that the listeners of the Rollist podcast. <laughs> you need a jingle. You should have a ding. Yeah, each time we should have a like a ring or something. Ding ding ding. Each time I say what? The Royce podcast. <laughs> Stop! We said no banging the table. <laughs> that's that's gross, by the way. That's not what I meant. So picking up Chubay. our characters. So I, I will be the honorable and very wise and old hero Tada. Where is your Shubei? Uh, he looks like a young guy. He obviously wants to conquer the world, but I have absolutely no clue how to do it. That's your guy. <laughs> That's my guy. I think I have to buy stuff. Sure. I've read the rules of that thing. Yep. In the, in the books of the rules. 
but it's... Do I make friends? Since it's going to take a bit of time, that's maybe the moment where I insert. The second part of the interview of Kundin. Do you know Kundin, guys? Yeah, you, you know. You met him in the 10 years. Kumia. Oh yeah, that's why you're confused. He's got two pseudonyms. So he's got Kundin and Kumia, and he prefers Kundin. What's quite funny when you run into uh, role players and what, when role players run into each other is that they start telling those stories of what mm. happened to uh, quotation marks uh, them, <laughs> which means their their character. So, what's your best memory of a, an event or a feat uh, <laughs> accomplished by by one of your your character as a gamer? Was it Kundin? What was your favorite character? Well, my favorite character was probably Kundin. Um, so that was a dwarf. That was a dwarf, a dwarf warrior, uh, who was originally created for the Warhammer uh, role-playing game. Who was a troll slayer. So in the game, that's a dwarf who lost his uh, honor for a reason which is probably the only one to know, which he will certainly not reveal. So and uh, is seeking uh, redemption through fights and uh, glorious death. So did he find death? <laughs> no, he is still alive, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so still no redemption. Um, otherwise, I remember that uh, other character called... Uh, oh, who was it? Raoul Delco uh, was my first character at uh, Call of Cthulhu, which is probably the prob first proper this time role playing game uh, so, I ever played. Call of Tulu is based on the What's numerous the yeah, yeah numerous stories and works of uh, HP Lovecraft, Lovecraft and all the writers who developed on his universe. And, and so sorry, this character um, that character met uh, his glorious death. Unfortunately he wasn't seeking it. Um, he was uh, an American writer so to give you an example of the wide range of um, characters you can play in role-playing games. So an American writer uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, 1925, I think, uh, who got caught in very unpleasant stories, um, was living in the real world, so uh, planet Earth, uh, in the 1920s, and suddenly he started hearing very strange stories. Uh, something happened to an old friend of his. Um, it was called... À la lisière de l'obscurité, so... At uh, the edge of darkness. Something like this, yeah. I can't remember the English. Uh, oh, I thought it were talking about the mask of Nyarlathotep, where it starts with you got a friend who's a reporter yeah, who's supposed yeah, to meet him, yeah. and he does. I, I guess <laughs> it's a very, very it's a classic, usually, standard yeah. start for, for a very movie. Very um, You often have an old uncle dying in a very mysterious... Uh, property or a uh, yeah, distant relative. Uh, so or did they die? Because it's also very standard just to die in this game. It's a game which has a reputation of being very deadly for characters. Yeah, usually um, before he dies he turns <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. Uh, the years. But yeah. Well, my poor Raoul got into a couple of uh, investigations. The first one did up quite well. Second one uh, didn't end up that well. I remember deciding with my group that it was an excellent idea to go in, uh, in a graveyard in the middle of the night. And uh, we ended up surrounded by uh, ghouls and being all devoured. So that's how my uh, my poor Raoul ended up uh, as a meat for ghouls, unfortunately. Do you like it better to be the narrator, the, the game master, than the player? I prefer being a game master, I always preferred it. Not that I dislike being a player, obviously. It's simply a different experience. If I had to explain it, I would say it probably appeals more to my creative side. Uh, always like writing short stories, uh, short novels, sort of things. When you're a game master, obviously, like you said, you can create your own campaign. But even if you use the campaigns which are available online or in official publications, You often end up giving them your own twist and tweaking them in a way to make them more personal. You keep some bits, you just discard others. 
So yeah, that's this whole creative aspect, which is not something which takes place around the table. It's uh, some kind of work that you do prior to the, the whole game, basically. So what what is this work, and how much time does it take? Well, what do you actually do? <laughs> Depends how slacky you are, <laughs> or how dedicated you are. Depends on, on the game master. I'm someone who doesn't prepare the game too seriously, I would say, but still, I like knowing where I'm going, and uh, I like knowing where my players are going. I don't like surprises, usually. Probably not very good at uh, improvisation. But, uh, yeah, it, it can take, if you want to do things seriously, sometimes, of course, you don't have the time to do so, but if you want to prepare a campaign seriously, you probably uh, have to, um, to spend several hours, several evenings uh, preparing the game. Uh, obviously, reading the core textbook, if, uh, if you bought... Uh, a book or writing your own campaign, which is even longer, obviously. You're going to think about things like uh, what is this uh, non playing character like? What are his motivations? Uh, which accent can I take if I want to play him? If I want to convey some kind of uh, emotion or some kind of feeling that my players are going to feel when they're meeting him for the first time? Well, actually, I actually have a very good memory of a game you, you mastered and I was a player. That mm-hmm. was a Cthulhu game. Yeah. And you did Louis Armstrong. Oh, yes. Ah. And that, <laughs> that was, that was really good. Uh, I, I, I don't know what Louis Armstrong sounded like in reality, but, uh, you really convey the character. And, and it, that was super cool. Please don't ask me to do the impersonation now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it would be appropriate, but. Well, that'd be not. Um, but yeah, thank you, yeah. It's, it's something, yeah, it's one of the pleasures of uh, RPGs, really. Being able to, to play your character. That's, that's what it is, really. If you you could play this game just very casually, like you would play any board game, uh, and you could even play it uh, in a way that many players do when they start playing, uh, which is just describing your character sections. So, uh, in other words, you would be able to say things like, "Okay, my dwarf just asked the innkeeper um, where the group of orcs are," and if you want to play the game and play a quintessential version of the game I think you're losing something there so you're losing some of the pleasure of the game you're losing all the bravado of your character you're losing um, well, uh, the way he speaks the, maybe he's going to, to get annoyed maybe he's going to use uh, some kind of uh, language which is uh, probably not appropriate for this podcast um, but yeah you're, you're losing a bit of your character it's just like if you were going to see a play you're not expecting Actors to just saying, uh, to describing what they are doing. You're yeah. either expecting them to act. Yeah, to act to what we, what role play them, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you role play it. So, yeah, that's one of the pleasures of the game. So. And to go back to your uh, initial question, yeah, that's, uh, that's a part of, uh, an important part of the, the creation of the scenario prior to the, the game itself, thinking about your NPCs and uh, how they're going to, how you're going to impersonate them. We are doing a perspective taking and like we're crazy, we're changing the way to play it, okay though. <laughs> Oops. Okay. It's très zen comme début, non? My fault. Yeah, but. We should throw dice. There's no dice. Like uh, 20 faces, dice, or. Oh, you mean to say who starts? Yeah. You know, I started the previous one, so let's say that the one who starts is the one who say a number which is the closest to mine. I'm thinking about a number. Nine? I don't understand joke. No, it's not a joke. Number between what and what? (laughs) Science, this thing. 42! Okay, you won. I was thinking about (laughs) 3000. So we're playing Tokaido. You are 
playing just travelers going along the famous route between Tokyo and Edo. Okay. Actually, I walked that road. You did? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a section, uh, an old section with old pavement and so on. It was That's quite sweet. I yeah. used my capacity to buy this one and this one. Okay. Also, normal price is not my capacity. And that's it. Okay. Uh, your turn. So how far can I go? I can go as wherever as you far, but the thing is, you don't want to go far. You c you need just to stop here. So I can just decide to go here instead. Yes. I'm in this place what? where... You, you can be on the same... No, you cannot be on no, the same No, here spot. because you have a second spot. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, actually, playing Tokaido, maybe it raises a good question about London. What's your favorite Japanese restaurant? Maybe Chinese? Roku. Roku. Roku is by far the best one I've ever tried. They have the best food, the best cook, and the best sake. Okay, let me do my... <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Japan, guy. The thing is, <laughs> with Japanese restaurant, well, in Japan, you have different sorts of restaurant and you eat different things depending on the restaurant you go to. So, what sort of restaurant is, is this place? Is it noodles? Is it sushi? Or is it... Uh, Pizza! Pizza! Pizza. <laughs> the question doesn't matter anymore! <laughs> Pizza arrived, we're eating the pizza, which actually is much more convenient than playing a game while talking for a podcast, because that was a terrible idea on my part, and we will never do it again, ever. <laughs> but actually, eating a pizza is good for you, Zenny, to tell us about what I asked you about. What is going on between the arrow and Stardust, the, Stardust. a catcher, uh, a wrestler. Uh, wrestler. So, um, so, so Stardust. Stardust. I have Stardust. no idea about wrestling stuff. Explain to me like I'm 12 and I don't okay. really know what's uh -huh. all about. Okay, no so it's way. a professional wrestling star. You can say it's WWE, so it's a family kind of wrestling. So the goal is you have to tell stories, basically. You just don't have two people fighting each other. And actually it's the same thing than role play game. Each wrestler has what we call the gimmick. And it's basically a role that he has to play. Do you have classes then? Is it like role? Bit. Exactly, we have uh, classes in terms of um, wrestling moves. So you have big guy that do a uh, strength kind of thing, lifting people and throwing them away. You have the high flyer, much more smaller and doing like flips and back flips and and you have like technician, submission guy, so you actually have this kind of classes. You can see them as classes. Each guy needs to have a gimmick, so you have uh, the national US hero like John Cena. You have a uh, Ranger Orton that is playing like a Viper kind of thing, so a wrestler that uh, strike very fast. You have the bad guy that is always fleeing, you know, doing dirty things. And so Stardust, his gimmick is actually a delusional guy. He's, right, so he's a good guy or a bad guy? He's a bad guy. 
is actually a super villain. His gimmick is a super villain. So his real name is Cody Rhodes, and he was known before as Cody Rhodes. But his character evolved in order to be delusional. So he lived in another world where actually Stardust, the guy that he's acting on, is his real in the identity. He was actually asking to not be called Cody. He said, oh, Cody died, now I'm Stardust. Stardust, or Cody Road, is really thinking that he is Stardust and that he's coming from another dimension and he's really a super villain. That's the thing. For him, Stardust is a super villain. Wow, that's, that's meta. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> completely meta. So, so anyway, so we have this character that is playing a super villain in real for him. And he was fighting a guy called Neville. 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 I don't know. He's a bit like um, also a superhero. So his gimmick is a, is a high flyer guy. So he's always doing crazy things, jumping around and stuff. So his gimmick is a man that gravity forgot. Because he's can fly. Wow. wow. And actually his entrance also is based on DC Comics. So you have these two guys that was fighting in a super villain versus superhero kind of way. But Stardust actually beat Neville. So he basically said, oh, I'm a super villain. But in order to be a super villain, you need a super hero to fight with. Ah, so he so wanted another hero. That's what the third is when he said, oh, I need another hero. And he's doing the arrow thing. And that's why he keeps saying, be my hero. Exactly. Because the arrow did we mention. All of that, I never thought of resting at all. You told me about it, so <laughs> yes. I was ready to, to yeah. step in. Yeah. Um, a month ago, several months ago, uh, it started in May, actually. I mean, it started a bit in March with this uh, super villain kind of thing, completely assumed. Mm. But it, it started in May when actually the actor playing Arrow, so am I? So we are in August 2015. And in May 2015, Stephen Amell, who is yes. the actor playing Arrow on the CW TV show, DC Comics, based on Green Arrow, started posting stuff about that on his f Facebook page, telling that he entered some kind of argument with yes. a wrestler yes. and posted a video and there was this all painted over guy. Oh yeah, completely over the top. It's like latex. a full size latex combination, uh, I don't know what. The face painted in silver, is the blue stars over the face. He has black gloves that, that makes a star when you put it together. That kind of absolutely over the top um, kind of costume. Must be sweating like crazy yeah. inside. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying Stephen Amo, actor of Arrow, was in Rick's side, like directly in front of the restaurant. In May, he was there and actually uh, started us beginning to taunt him a bit. Nothing physical, but he came in front of the guy and like do some, you know... He came thing. super close, like yeah, yeah, yeah. 6 centimeters yeah, from yeah. his face. So, so that was the start and after it, 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 it has been followed with his Twitter and Facebook kind of thing. So mm -hmm. they were keep fighting on the internet? Yes, they were always taunting each other. So, so Stardust, uh, each win, he was saying that, oh, like, you know, Arrow is, uh, is, is, um, I can, I can beat him and everything. And, um, so they, they were fighting these things through Twitter. You even have fun art. Yeah, People exactly. making drawings yeah, exactly. of the dead. That's the thing. There is, you know, Arrow character in the um, WWF stuff. No, but, no, but that, that's the thing for Stardust. And you have actually um, what we call the gimmick, gimmick interview. So the Podiros was playing Stardust. And it was, as you do in role playing game, you completely play. People, journalists were asking, oh, but you're trying to fight uh, Armel, it's an actor. And the guy would say, I don't know this guy. Uh, he said, I don't know him, who is he? I, I know Arrow, this is Arrow, this is... Uh, so he was using, I don't, I don't remember the name of Arrow, but he was using mm. this. Oliver Queen. Oliver Queen, that's it. He says, ah, it's Oliver Queen, but like he's a hero and stuff. It's Arrow, it's not an actor guy. So they fight like this, of course, behind the scene. Uh, you need to have like this contract, you need to be sure that this guy can be involved in this kind of competition. Actually, those, uh, Amal also is a fan of wrestling, so that's why this Perhaps. angle has been, uh, has, been, has been made. And so, lately, one week ago, 
Yes, one week ago it was a trigger uh, because Amel was in ringside and he intervened physically into a match between actually Neville and Barrett. So Neville is a good guy, Barrett is a bad guy. Another bad guy. Both of them are fighting and uh, Neville win. So Stardust came in to beat Neville and Amel intervened to beat Stardust. So at the end, what do we have? We have a 2 versus 2, so a tag team match. Wow. Which is Neville with Arrow, so you have Neville with the finisher Red Arrow and the Green Arrow versus... <laughs> that, that is move, you expect exactly. that to be on the other side. The f Neville's finish yeah. move is throwing himself in the air doing a crazy thing, which to be honest, it's really impressive. It's a core crew starting a starring press. A core crew? Shooting star wow. press. <laughs> Okay. That means you're in turnbuckle, you have to flip, because it's a cold screw, you have to flip in a diagonal manner Speed. And you eat uh, with your belly basically the Okay, game. basically it looks like a very muscular Cirque du Soleil employee who's yeah. jumping at you <laughs> <laughs> Like a, an insane guy, he does it, it's very impressive And so he's got the, the his move are the Red arrow, Red arrow, green arrow, exactly. and then you got Oliver Queen as the arrow, exactly. the arrow. And so this is uh, Stardust, so the gimmick guy is a super villain, and Wade Barrett. That is it just a typical uh, British wrestler? You said British? Yes, it's British. Yeah, we've seen oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah, Wade Barrett! <laughs> <of> the <laughs> podcast, London, <laughs> the Tables of RPG, Crazy Thing Role Playing, London, Barrett, English, no, that is from English too, actually. Yeah, because it's got the he's crown. An so, yeah, that's, that's because he won a tournament, uh, the King of the Ring tournament, so now he can be called the King for one year. So, so he's not the King of a, England. No, it's way better than that. He's the King of Wrestling, so he's the King of the WWE Universe, which Whoa. is bigger than England, obviously. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so it will be a tag team match. So a tag team match is a two versus two, but you just you just have one guy per team in the ring. So, so you, you that's you the exactly. unfair stuff. And exactly. So you have to to touch uh, your partner. And the partner can take your place. So in that case, you can have actually maybe a good match because I mean the guy is an actor, so it doesn't do wrestling, so he can't. That was my question. He, he can't fight for ten or fifteen minutes or something no, good, okay. right? So I'm guessing that's why that might be starting thing. After, we don't know if Neville will do 95% of the thing and uh, Arrow will just come at the end and do a move mm -hmm. to win, or if we will be... Maybe he's being trained. We have several things that say that it may be good, because so the guy is a true uh, fan of wrestling. He's obviously very well shaped and trained, mm -hmm. so the way actually he has uh, come to the ring was quite good. He just mm -hmm. jumps the barricade. Jump to go to the apron and jump to go through uh, over the, the, the rope. It's very fun to look at the exactly. I mean, it, Usually you don't enter the ring like this, right? I mean, I mean it's nice when you know beforehand that it's yes, all for yes. fun because actually it's uh, well, it's impressive the way he jumps, that's quite alright, and, and then the way he punches. Stardust looks like. Uh, that, 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 that looks quite violent. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's quite, it's quite but, impressive. Uh, so, actually, that's not the first time that WWE uh, hire people to fight. I mean, sometimes they fight, sometimes they just hear and like do some referee kind of thing or just like slap a guy and that's it. Because, because you need to plan this in advance. You need, uh, so you have a lot of contract behind. You need to be sure that like medically you can do this. You need to be sure that actually the actor has a planning where he can be available for a special event. So here the event will be WrestleMania. So also it's a big thing. So you have two big events in uh, wrestling in WWE. You have WrestleMania. Everybody knows it. And you have SummerSlam. <coughs> and SummerSlam is in August. It's the second biggest event of the year. So it's something important, it's not just, you know, a single so match like this. this fight is going to be taking place as part of the second biggest event. It's called the biggest event of the summer. It's basically the second biggest event of the WWE. Oh, so it's taking place in Summer Mania, not in... In Summer Slam. Summer Slam. Not at, at present Mania. Yeah, but it's common so that people are involved. So we had uh, Mike Tyson that has been involved, uh, Flood Mayweather, 
He has done a match in WrestleMania. Arnold Schwarzenegger was there, but what? not for a match. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame. Wow. Uh, in the last uh, WrestleMania, for instance, Triple H was uh, dressed as a Terminator <laughs> for the intro. Yeah. Oh, we have uh, Hugh Jackman. He came several times actually to WWE, uh, uh-huh. including one when he was doing the promotion of Wolverine. So there have been an angle, a match with a guy called Damian Sando. He dressed as a mag- Magneto. So he was dressed as Magneto, trying to use a Magneto thing, and just like Hugh Jackman uh, just came and like beat him like this. Okay, wow. <laughs> cool. It's kind of classy to um, mix the two universes. Well, it's a very efficient advertising thing. People, they're gonna try a lot of people. Exactly. But at so the same point. time, I must say, it's, you, you've been telling me about it, about wrestling before. And you obviously like it a lot, and it's quite interesting. I never realized about all the story behind it, and because I I watch a bit of of it, I think uh, at some point I liked a wrestler who was called the Kid, but because I Tyson Kid, no, no HBK, well, the one two three Kid, it was called HBK, the Heartbreaker Kid. I don't know. It, it's just. It happened that I had to watch wrestling because at the time television, no internet, you had to look whatever <laughs> was on. Uh, that's a time you cannot remember if you're less than 20. But I just saw this guy winning a game in very odd circumstances. So I saw the beginning of his yeah. identity and I kind of caught up the story. But it's, yeah, it's, it's very because interesting. That's, that's the thing that's really a story. I mean, you can take a match, a wrestling, a wrestling match and like seen it, but the match can be good. Okay, that's fine. But most of the time, you want you want a story. You want something uh, that tell you why these guys are fighting, why this guy is fighting like this and not like this. So it's 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 a little bit like if you look at some I don't know just some action movie, but it's just something. It's an action movie that is a little bit less or more realistic depending on which point of view you take, and that's continue forever. I was a big fan of The Undertaker. When I was so, a kid. No. <laughs> so actually, uh, the biggest match in SummerSlam will be Undertaker versus uh, Brock Lesnar. Okay. So you just let's start to play a very heroic song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to find something on Free Music Archive and play it right now.
Okay, back here. A few seconds for us. Maybe two minutes for you with the song. Continuing on the theme of wrestling, which reminds me, actually, we entirely dropped the subject of Japanese wrestler in London, but we'll keep that for later. <laughs> <laughs> but staying with wrestling and going back to role-playing games, you have uh, the project for a table, uh, which is a wrestling-based role-playing game. Yes, but actually it's a sad story. The book was in my bag that has been lost during a trip. No. And the book is not edited anymore. What? So I have called a friend of mine that owns a library for fantasy. So trolling in you. So I don't have the book anymore. I hope they still have it in trolling. Oh, that's a shame. So sad. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, very motivated by that. I wasn't too. I was about to buy no, a so, mask so, for the game. So I have a mask of. Uh, so know. yeah. So if I if I um, if I'm um, I can pull the table, I will uh, I will wear the mask during the. Um, the game brings again. Oh, that would be so. That's gonna be so cool. When we usually play at the Royal Festival, <laughs> <laughs> so I recommend you visit the Royal Festival. <laughs> and if you see a weirdo with a wrestling mask, it's maybe exactly. two of them. That will really mimic moves and. Uh... <laughs> Can you tell us anything about this game? Did you have time to read it? Uh? So the game, so basically, you are in a country that is um, a tropical island uh, in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. Uh -huh. Very good place, and it's during the 60s, basically. Uh -huh. So the story is, actually in the center of the Bermuda Triangle, spoiler, you have a very uh, big hole in the sea uh... that just swallows stuff. <laughs> Okay, so you have these things, that's why you have like people crashing and because it's messing with all the electronics. This thing so, is basically a door to hell or uh, to whatever. That's more like a wormhole or maybe a we, gate. Uh, yeah, a gate like in... Uh, gate. Like that, 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 that would be discovered into the game. So that like, just basically something bad that swallows stuff so that kill people and sometimes Stuff are coming out, Ooh. but bad stuff. Wow, I feel that reminds me. Of okay, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, the and you could stuff. end like this, but exactly. mixed with wrestling, giant robot <laughs> Mexican wrestler. <laughs> yeah, oh, and so um, so basically, the luchadores are uh, wrestlers with mystical power. So when they have their mask, uh, they become super hero. And they use that because they are the only ones that can fight the creatures that are coming out of this of this siphon. So these creatures are more or less like amphibious, lizard kind of thing. Uh, and they are resistant to every weapon, so you just have the rest of the girls. This, uh, this siphon is also messing with all the mind of all the people. So they tend to go to the dark side. Mm. Uh, so you have like scientists that come crazy and create robots to destroy people. Uh, you have uh, all the typical animals or bees that, you know, just go crazy and go berserk. Well, you also have this uh, magical voodoo. So exactly. it works like the WWE, every guy has a gimmick of his own. So you create your wrestler according to different uh, characteristics. So you can be strong, you can be uh, very agile, you can be resistant. What's the game system like? You like it? Is it something? Yeah. So the base system is actually you have two things. You have the combat and you have the social thing. So mm -hmm. the social thing quite simple. Combat are a little bit difficult because you want actually to create uh, offense. So you have lot of different sub offense like carry stuff. Okay. So you basically divide each thing that you can do in a fight in some small units. So carrying, running, uh, yelling, punching, throwing. And after, you command them and that's your offense. So it's not just like, oh, I hit this guy. You have to say, I, I'm taunting him, I'm insulting him, then I run to him, then I punch him. I lift it and I throw it on something. So okay. the, the so game system is a bit complex, but it's It's in because tune. of the wrestling kind of thing. So yeah. if you know the wrestling, you can say, oh, I'm doing this, this offense, and you already know how to divide it. Or you can just explain what you want to do. And of course, you can have special combination that have special effect. That will be your, what we call the trademark or finisher. So a trademark. Something that you always do in a fight, that's your thing. 
And a finisher is uh, the move that you use to end a fight. Okay, cool. That sounds like fun. I'm really missing it. It's a universe that is completely crazy. So you can fight zombie, you can fight <coughs> robot killer, you can fight a Cthulhu kind of... Uh, <laughs> It's completely over the top, but... Uh, That's how it works. And actually, when you read the book, it's kind of well described. Like, you still have a lot of things about, like, the islands that you're in, histories. You have a little bit of a campaign kind of plot inside that is kind of well described. A bit deep, actually. That's, that's very good. It's Luchadores. Who was the publisher? Or who was the publisher? Mm, I don't remember. Okay. You've played it before. I will. Uh, no, no, I just have the book from some time ago. Oh, and actually, because you're Luchadores, you also can fight in a typical arena with like typical matches in front of crowds. Uh, yeah, okay, you do, do, do you, you do both of them do both. because you need to eat, right? Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> eating, eating. We're not gonna go back at playing Tokaido, no. I think, but we can go back to our discussion where the Pizza delivery man. The right, us. best Japanese I ever tried was. Goku. <laughs> was afraid you would say a different name. <laughs> okay, Roku. Roku. First, it's fusion Japanese. Okay. So it's lots of new stuff, but it's absolutely brilliant. So if you're bored with your Japanese sushi and stuff, you have always something like fancy and new. They do good meat because I don't go there alone. They do good meat, but they have also very good uh, vegetarian options. And the drinks is absolutely brilliant, and it's crazy expensive. So 50 puppy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, what? So it's fusion cooking. So they don't have a Japanese specialty. No. All over the A lot of variation, and it, it, it's, it's outside of what you used to do in you know, Japanese. For more classic Japanese, I went to one this week, it's Ipudo. Ipudo. Ipudo, the best ramen. Ooh. Uh, why yes, the... yes, yes. Hey, okay. Again, I have no... <laughs> Gosh, I've never been to Japan. <laughs> Which ramen? Because you got different types of ramen. They have names with their noodle... Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, all, all, all are these ramen surf. It, it's, it's in a broth? Yes. Yeah, okay. Is it thick or thin ramen? Thick. Thick, okay. So, no. Circle or square? Square. Ibudo. And where is it? Ibudo. The one is not far from Tottenham, uh, Road, just next oh. to the Google <laughs> office. <laughs> yeah, not far from Tottenham. Okay, <laughs> from <Court> Road. <laughs> okay, that's much more central. Okay, no, actually I'm sort of in a quest right now because it's kind of a curse when you've been to Japan. It's just a ring deal. Yeah, and it's not only that, but uh, as I said, you, in Japan, you, you, you pick a restaurant and it's quite precise. Well, the, the, at least the one I've been to and what I witnessed. You pick one restaurant and they got a, a precise set of things they do. So that you got places where they will just do fried eggs with omelettes. Okay. Which are special kinds of wrap omelette with rice in it. You will have places where they especially do fried stuff, especially fried pork. You got places who do sushi uh, as well. You got yakiniku, big fan yeah. of that. Small Very barbecue from our um, view. Yeah, uh, stuff in London. But that's the thing. I okay. live in Paris, but not in London. So I'm I'm running around as usual. So the thing. Even ramen, you got different sort of ramen, and each ramen place do just yeah. one sort of ramen. Yeah, okay. So you got shoyu ramen, and you got different ramen. And the, I tasted ramens there, which I loved, and we're desperate with Pacifica to, to find something similar in London. The ramen I'm looking for are called sukemen. Please, listeners, if you know where to find good sukemen in London. Please let me know. <laughs> you can even go into the city in England, you're crazy. Oh, I will go to other <laughs> cities. The Superman quest. I, I, I traveled <laughs> England quite a bit. I would be happy to have them in Newcastle. So that's dipping noodles. Oh, Ipudo has one when they have a um, one with pork and one with tofu. Uh -huh. So it's not ramen, but they also have the option for those where you dip in a Ipudo sauce. Okay, so the, the idea is that you you receive a bowl of ramen which are not necessarily cold but look lukewarm. Yeah. So they're in a big bowl and you've got another big bowl with a, a very thick 
and very rich sauce, uh, super good. The one I had was pork mm -hmm. based. And you take your ram and you got even a, 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 a they give you a paper apron yeah. to put on your skin. <laughs> because you're a foreigner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Everybody's got the apron. Uh, at first we were like, oh, we don't need the apron. Then we saw everybody who had one. We said, okay, we're going to take the apron. Uh, you, so you yeah, suck the, your, your noodles. But the thing, you take your noodles, you dip them in the, that thick sauce. And then you, you eat them and they're slippery with that. Okay, so, and I, I went to one, it was in Kennington, I think. It's uh, one of the Boon Daddies. So speaking about Japanese, Boon Daddies are places where they have restaurants which change, I think, every year. Okay. And they got different places. First, there, there was this one, uh, I don't remember if it's Kennington or whatever. It's in some sort of mall, so at first I was enthusiastic with it. It looks slightly a bit like in Japan. Long, short, long story short, that was not what I was looking for. It was not bad, but it was not great. But Boon Daddies, they got this other Boon Daddies in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And there, right now, this year, uh, it's the restaurant taking place there, is uh, called Shak Fuyu. <laughs> and it's, yeah, contemporary Japanese also. Uh, I don't know if you might say fusion, but it's so good. It's really, 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 really good. Shak Fuyu in Seoul. So good. It? It's really close to the theater where they play uh, The Commitment right okay. now. That's, that's the place, that's the uh, Cambridge Circus. Uh, on the corner you have a diner. The, the, when you enter Seoul, coming from this play, from this there's theater, a there's, a, there's a really sharp corner with a diner there. Outside of Chinatown, okay. So yeah, it's outside Chinatown. It's in so 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 okay. so in it's between uh, the theater where they play Miss Saigon and the theater where they play the Commitments. Okay, but check for you. Look it up on the internet, and you will find it. And uh, they, they they got stuff to die for. I don't like to use the word tapas, but you know it's small, yeah, it's small dishes thing. you you That's share. Roku Roku just exactly that. You've got aubergines, which were really good. There was one. Not for you, uh, Akadosh, but they, they had this meat which was mm -hmm. to die for. It's slice of meat, very beef. rare. Beef. Uh, yeah, beef. And it's in a, again in a thick sauce. And when you you eat it, these slices, you've got the <laughs> you've got the blood from the the meat mm -hmm. which mix with the sauce, and uh, it's uh, it's an encounter made in heaven. We are not vampires. <laughs> we are not vampires, but yeah, we're not. But, you yeah, know, it's super good. Ah, all their stuff are super good. There's always a little line. And when you pass the line, they put you in... Uh, they got a bar, maybe a mm -hmm. tiny bar downstairs. And you wait and they, they hand you one of these uh, electronic devices which uh, blips when it's your turn. And then you go to your <laughs> table. But uh, the people are super nice and the food is super, super good. And it's it's not cheap, but it's it's not too expensive. I mean, it's not... It's not 50 pounds for sure. It's, yeah, I don't know, it's maybe between 20 and 30, depending on how enthusiastic you are, you are about the thing. Shak Fuyu. Shak Fuyu. Bone, bone, bone daddies. Bone daddies? Yeah. Shak Fuyu. What about you, Xen? Do you have a London. favorite Japanese place in London? No, actually, I don't think I've been to Japanese in London. Uh, I've been to the Korean kimchi thing. Yes, I, like I do like those. Yeah, yeah, I do like it very much. Was it the one we went together to? A big I think so, yes, yes. Very like big in, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's but actually, kimchi. It's kimchi. It's kimchi. It's restaurant. Kimchi. Yeah, you have oh. a different uh, restaurant. You have one like near uh, yeah, yeah, Garden, I think. Uh, you, you have a lot yes. of... But uh, this one is bigger, I think. No, there's a fast food one where you just yeah, pick up and yeah, uh, yeah. go. This one is a proper restaurant. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So I like both of them, yeah. I must say, I look a lot for Karen. Restaurants, bibimbap, all those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah bibimbap is very good over there. And uh, there is one I like. It's actually not much, but it's actually real Korean one. Same place, not far away from the same place. Actually, all the Korean are uh, around. in and uh, along uh, Albon 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 and, and uh, Tadamco Road. You have a Korean restaurant under a Korean shop. Okay. Ooh. And it's very small. And it's K-pop music oh. <laughs> all over. <laughs> Another place like that, not Japanese, not Korean, but Chinese. Um, couldn't tell which region of China, but because it, it 
uh, it felt proper, you know, and when it's proper, it's from a specific place. Yeah. There's a very tiny place. It doesn't look like anything. It's in uh, Chinatown. And I, it's called Cafe TPT. Okay. Wardo Street. TPT for? I don't know. It's Chinese and Malay. That's, Very not, sp- that's not even a typical Chinese. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't <laughs> call you, but uh, we were in the area, we wanted to eat Chinese. Yeah. Uh, I looked it up on the internet and so I found this place, went to this place. Small place, looks like just your not so great China. I mean, it's not fancy or anything. Packed with people speaking Chinese. Actually, it was funny because there was, uh, next to us, there were a group of three guys and the three of them from Asian background, but uh, clearly one of them was brought up here in London and not the two others were actual, actually really? from China and they were explaining him. everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and, and the, the meal was super good, uh, soft shell. Crabs, wow, super good. Uh, f- uh, again, uh, meat, but and aubergines again. There, good, very, very good aubergine. There is one I did uh, for the first time last month. It's a massive boiling spicy water stuff where you actually dip in your vegetable and your meat mm-hmm. and eat afterward. Um, it's a thing, and uh, it's a restaurant. It's called Red and Hot. It's in um, from Leicester Square Trafalgar. And I choose the not spicy option, which is spicy like crazy. So, so, it was, was Korean, Korean or, yeah. or was it Chinese? That's Chinese. Mm. Chinese. Oh, Chinese to That's spicy. Chinese, but I mean, very, very strong. Yeah. I think last Japanese tree I got two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One very fast. So again, Tonkonsu for ramen. Really liked it. Uh, I don't know how it compares to Ipudo, but I'm trying Ipudo. But you talk Ryoku? No, Tonkonsu. Tonkonsu? Yeah. Ryoku. Anyway, going back to Japanese. Japanese food I love in London. Greenwich, they got a little market there, and you got several food stalls. You got a, a nice thing with roast beef and potatoes. You got yeah. Spanish pastries. You got Louisiana sausages in a bun, uh, which are really good too. But each time I went there, I went back to the same food stall. It's a Japanese food stall, and it's super good. Greenwich. Go there on a rainy day. You don't care. You go to the food market. <laughs> uh, it's the weekend. I don't know if it's Sundays or Saturdays. You go there and you try the, the Japanese stands. I love it. And and then uh, you take a Spanish pastry because you, you don't care. You're in London. But uh, yeah, and the roast beef is really good also <laughs> on the other stand. <laughs> Speaking of Japanese bakery, there is a one Japanese that is actually uh, focused on matcha. Like crazy matcha. And matcha, um, it's green tea powder. It's next to your office. South Kensington. Yes, and just behind South Kensington Station, you go to Japanese, and they do everything with matcha. Even the coffee can be mocha and matcha. They have dessert and matcha. You can eat food with matcha or not. But it's and you can buy uh, some tea as well. So what do in, you have in the Broadway? Japanese bakery? Matcha everywhere. Matcha is to Japanese what speculos is to Belgian people. I don't know if you picture, but in Belgium, you even have speculos flavored chewing gum. So, so in Japan, you've got matcha flavored Oreos, you got matcha flavored Kit Kat, you got matcha flavored ice cream, of course. It's a bit bitter. By the way, going back, Shaq for you, they got only one dessert, okay. but no choice. It's a great dessert. It's a French toast with Japanese sugar on it. What is a French toast? So a French toast. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm French, but I'm not sure what a French toast is. Okay, a French French toast, toast. which is more commonly known in France and Belgium as pain perdu. Oh yeah. Indeed. That I know. So it's a slice of pain perdu, French toast, so a piece of bread drenched in... Lost bread, if you want to translate. Yeah, because you used to do that with bread which has gone stale. Exactly. So basically, you take a piece of bread, you dip it in a mix of milk and uh, eggs. eggs, and then you you you, you fry cook you fry it you you cook it on, on a, a in, a, in a pan. Right. And so uh, that's it. So it's but it's a brioche French toast and served with some matcha ice cream. 
And the matcha ice cream is not sugary at all, so it's, good, it's even, even a bit better, but the balance between the, the sugary French toast and the matcha ice cream, check for you guys and girls. <laughs> it's really good. nice. Speaking of food and Japan, a good opportunity to move in the last section of this podcast, which is just a rip-off from an Australian podcast, <laughs> because why not? The section is, what are you reading? What are you gonna read? So it's about something you're currently reading and something you're gonna read. And the reason why it's a good transition for me is that currently I'm reading a manga, so a Japanese comic book, which is about food, which I really like. <laughs> Especially since it reminds me when I was in Japan. No, no. Well, okay. Uh, <clears throat> it's called Silver Spoon. I don't know if it's available in English. I hope so. So it's a story about a kid in high school, a young man. He's been really stressed by his parents about being the first of this class. His idea is that <laughs> to be the first of this class, <laughs> which apparently helps you uh, to, to go to, to select your university okay. or whatever, yeah. he decided to go to a technical college. Technical in... Uh, agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> so he decided to go there. So he's a guy from the city, no uh, agriculture background at all. Really the, the city guy he goes there. He discovers everything about agriculture, about trees and... It's a chicken. It starts, it's lost in the woods. It's about, he, he finds out, or oh, you, you produce meat, or you, you, you grow food. It's drawn by, I believe that's the author of Full Metal Alchemist? Hiromu Arakawa. So she always draw herself uh, as, as a cow. You know, the, the shibi character uh, okay. at the beginning, at the end of coming is a cow. So I don't know if it's related. So the, the guy... The, the, the idea is that he finds out about about all these things. He realized that meat is actually animals. <laughs> a, a big part of this story is that at some point uh, they bring uh, piglets. He, he finds one who he finds super cute and he names him pork chops. And, <laughs> and all the other students who come from uh, which them, their parents are already uh, already raised cattle and so on. They tell him, no, 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 don't, don't give it a name because you, you'll grow attached and then you, you won't be able to kill him. And you're like, kill it? <laughs> and and, and okay, he's okay. got to deal with the fact that he needs to kill this piglet. He finds out how oh, food can taste great when it's super fresh. And at the same time, he finds out how hard working it is to, to manage a plate because the school itself it's a gigantic farm with fields, mm -hmm. with cows, with pigs, with chickens. Yeah, an advertisement yeah. for Japan. Uh, but I mean, countryside. yeah, actually, in a lot of manga, you have this kind of topic. With the story, you develop a universe and you explain how things are working. So you have the same thing about bakery, you have the same thing for the wine testing, you have the same thing like so here for farming. So it's also a way of, I, I'm, get, I, I'm guessing also, maybe, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing that at the end or at the beginning, you have a little explanation about one precise topic in each manga part. No, uh, no, no, but within the, the story, you've got uh, side notes, footnotes to explain new stuff, but I'm not sure if the footnotes are in the original manga oh, yeah. or if these are stuff uh, did by the French translator to explain the things which are very contextual and you know. You don't know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's super fun and it's really good. It's very interesting what it says. You know, I've been thinking a lot about you, Akadosh, when I was reading it because there's the subject about, okay, should I stop eating meat? <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's quite interesting because it's, I would be quite curious for you to read it and tell me what you find about it because, okay. because the conclusion of most of the characters is that no, we, we keep on eating meat because we, we love it. But, uh, it's interesting because it's still about, okay, but what are we doing really with meat? So the difference between uh, raising the, a property and, yeah, and what you do with food, how you treat it, and the fact that you, you can live and have no idea whatsoever how all these things are done. Zanny, what are you reading yourself right now? So I know the book. I, I don't know the book, actually. So I'm reading the second... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm reading the second part uh, of a book, I think it's from Jarosky, but I'm not sure, so I will... Uh, from who? 
Jaroski. It's a French uh, author from Lyon, actually. Okay. He has made La Horde du Contrevent. So the Horde of the, the Counterwind. Counter okay. <laughs> the first tome was uh, called Mempama. Not even that. Not, not even that. Interesting thing is, it's actually talking about a Celtic guy. So it's during this period of time. It's Cats. really, very important for French because that's the basics of our culture. Yeah, okay. So all of these tribes. <laughs> you follow the story of um, this child that will become actually a very great uh, warrior. Inside you have a lot of the scenes that explain just the typical day of the thing, like every little sacrifice, how to behave in society. How a warrior should behave in a host house, all this kind of thing. And you also learn a lot about the religion. So all the gods, uh, all the tribes wars, uh, the druids, the warrior, all the society. It's refreshing as a, as a fantasy lecture. You, you just go out of all the classical things that you read. You really learn something more about this organization. Is it based on some historical research or is it grounded or? I'm guessing that the, the author has made a lot of research about it, but the universe, it's not a real story, I'm guessing, uh -huh. because, because for sure you have mystical power okay. in place. So it's fantasy. The religion, I mean, not the religion, the effect of the religion is fantasy, but the tribes, I'm guessing, are real tribes. Uh, the wars, I'm not sure. I didn't check. Yeah, you have mystical power, you have, you have spells, uh, you have curse, but overall, it's kind of realistic. It feels realistic to me. Okay, and act, but actual fantasy stuff happens, or it it's, be just that they think something. I mean, no, yes, something weird happened, like you have like this uh, giant thing, you have witches. You're never sure because it may just be that the guy has been lost in the wood and just been crazy, have some fever and see things. Right? Okay, so it's still subtle. A bit. <laughs> okay, do people throw Celtic fireballs at each other? No. Okay. For instance, no. It's uh, like element. You go to a place that is cursed, suddenly you see ghosts. It's just that you have mystical place and power. That's cool. That's, that's an era which is not mentioned enough, I find. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, for, 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 for me, the real interest is uh, for sure this kind of learning what was the day and what was the religion and what was the society. In this, is uh, it how, how serious it is? I think the thing is very serious, like even the mythology, like these guys, like giant or whatever, are actually coming from the folklore. For instance, at some point, they have a, you have a king that say, okay, I will go to war with these guys. So this king is calling all the tribes. All the tribes have to run because horses are very rare. So they have to run to a meeting place. And actually, the last one to come will be killed before the war. Oh. So you have everybody that run to it. And like when two tribes encounter each other, they should have I'll train the other one because I don't want to finish last. Oh, so, <laughs> and so they explain this story about these things, so about these friends. So these guys are alive, but they, you know, they need to go faster. Uh, how do you know? How do you know which one is actually a true historical situation and not a fantastic for, I mean, one? for instance, this thing, this um, idea. idea, I'm guessing is coming from real thing. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. We should research. We can, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, for, it, it, in, the, in the story I know, I remember from this tribe, it's not the nonsense to have this kind of uh, sacrifice before a war, especially, and the sacrifice was the last guy. Yeah, but um, you, you don't have any clue. Uh, but I don't have any clue if... Uh, but, f I mean, it fits uh, quite nicely into the film, yeah, well, I'm guessing. Sounds good, and a lot of stuff's been discovered yeah. uh, over the years about Celts, and it's much more interesting and complex and than the, people talk about. Because, because Jarowski is, uh, at the at basis, he was uh, writing a role-playing game, and he was writing a historical-based role-playing game. Did he work on Netflix? <laughs> That's yes, him? exactly. Um, that's him. I heard his name. Of that's course, him. of course. So that's why also I'm guessing that this thing is historically based at least. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, it makes it more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that he's a guy. Yes. 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 Good. Good.
Akadosh or? I am reading right now The King in Yellow, which is a decadent literature, horror, and supernatural genre from 1895. Very old one. It's a series of novels with crazy stuff happening. And uh, The King in Yellow inspired a lot of people, and it's actually part of the uh, Cthulhu mythos. Really? Uh, yeah, King in Yellow is also uh, next to the Necromonicon in the literature. Because The King in Yellow is not just the title of the book, but it's not about the story. It's stories about people having read The King in Yellow. Oh, okay. Ooh. It's a crazy story. I say it's actually a theater play, but that can turn people into madness. It's all short stories of bad people having read the King in Yellow. <laughs> Which makes it fun and uh, yes, it's part, completely part of the two readers. Because he reused it. So, so it's very old style uh, horror stories. Or... Like Frankenstein and stuff. Yeah. It's so old, it's actually in the public domain. Uh, if you know LibriVox or uh, Gutenberg Project, you can go and uh, grab it from there. The one I'm reading is from uh, Project Gutenberg. It's very, very, very good. I like it a lot. Cool. So it's super cool. So the, the King in Yellow. So who's the author of this? It's uh, Robert Chambers. It's just one author. It's not multiple stories. It's multiple stories, but all by this guy. So decadent movement, uh, decadent literature, because it's part of a group of writers that decided to specifically meet together and tell horror stories. Because that was okay. missing yeah. uh, the genre, and they say. Let's go crazy and let's write a horror story. So that was our reading. So what are you going to read after that? I have two practical books. Practical? Practical. One is The Art of Reading, a <laughs> book about reading books. That's... <laughs> so how, do you, how are you supposed to read the books properly? And That's another one by a Japanese woman that is actually very famous in Japan. How to clean your house and get rid of extra stuff. Oh. So that's a bit of the illness of, so you, uh, you have too many stuff. She said, how to get to the bare essential, and how do you make sense of what matters to you, what doesn't matter, what is actually just a trend. So get rid of the stuff you don't need, keep the right one, and how do you organize your stuff? Is it the one where you put all your stuff in boxes, and if you don't open a box, them. in a couple of months you get rid of uh, the box? No, it's more it's almost philosophical stuff. Do you smile when you see your object? No, throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, there have been a, cr a crazy article about uh, stuff. Uh, you don't need your kitchen, you just need a stone that remember of your mother. That's only what you need. Um, <laughs> The extreme is no, absolutely brilliant. I'm <laughs> laughing, but it's uh, no. I, I think it's quite cool and interesting. Although I'm fine. That, and I also have a third one waiting for me, which is Thomas Piketty. I really want to read Piketty. this book. I started the first chapter, which mm. is a bit exactly so, so uh, 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 So the title is Capital in the 21st century. Capital in the. And I've read the executive summary, which is 20 pages. And it's actually very understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to get my head free for this massive yeah. book. Nice, ambitious. Actually, no, 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 because it's really easy to read. It's a massive book that you cannot bring uh, with you on the tube unless you want to show off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reading an economist, but I'm fine. Is there any, uh, what are you gonna read? I'm waiting for the next book of uh, Game of Thrones. It's in two years, right? Sorry? No, I heard it was he completed it. Did it really? No. No? I told you it. I don't know. I didn't check uh, recently. So... So, <laughs> what are you gonna read after this book you are currently reading is a book which is not even out and won't be before two years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a book that I want to read for sure just after. Yeah. Stop knocking on that yes, table. Yes, yes. I don't have precise idea. I think I want to read the Warhammer 40k uh, kind of thing. Are you talking about the novels or? No, yeah, it's a novel. Uh, but there's more than one, I think. Yeah, the, so I've read the thing with the Fenris uh, Space Wolf novel. I want to read the one from Dan Abbott, I guess, with the witch hunter. Because or... I, I don't know so much actually the universe, so I want to. Yeah, when you be great because they are doing a massive revamp of the wolf flesh stuff. Really? Yeah. No, don't be Again, yes, <laughs> again. The can. Mm. Ah. Then you see everything is destroyed. It's not like a full reboot. It's like a post apocalyptic 
situation where everything is destroyed, few survive, yeah. it's getting over. And, and revive again. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, so, that's a little bit the problem with uh, the, the universe at all this kind of thing, because you need to always, you know, read it, so you're figuring, so you need to always to read it, the history. Yeah. You didn't say what you're about to read after that. Thank you for asking. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm planning to read is The Innocent. Uh, it's a novel I ordered as part of a roping game project. So the novel is set in uh, post-war Berlin, right after the war. A sort of uh, noir story, so uh -huh. detective story, but in that very sp special setting which I want to have a, a series of game in. The book is a role-playing book or it's novel that you... No, no, wait. I've got a role-playing book which is called Cold City. The idea is that you're in post-war Berlin before the Berlin Wall. So you've got different areas of Berlin divided between the, the Allied forces. So the Russians got an area, the French got an area, the Americans and so on. And the concept of the, the role-playing games is that Have you ever heard about uh, Operation Paperclip? No. Nope. Yes, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Operation Paperclip was all the stuff the Americans did in uh, post-war Germany to recover as much uh, science and tech and even actual scientists from what the Germans have been working on during the war and bring them in the US to develop stuff. So one of the most famous guy of that is Von Braun, who uh, was a rocket engineer. He helped develop, I believe, the, the V1 and V2 rocket bombs, uh, which were used against London. But this guy, afterwards, he worked for the NASA and he helped develop uh, the Saturn rocket for the Apollo mission. So he took the Americans to the moon. So Operation Paperclip was recovering all of that from the Germans and, of course, the Russian at a similar uh, okay. operation. No, picture that, but in a world where the Germans were actually doing the stuff you see in Indiana Jones, so playing with mystical stuff, they were doing crazy scientist thing, they were doing things that are in the style of the Cthulhu and Lovecraft stories. And very hard to Cthulhu. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and the idea, so you got the American trying to recover the secret, the Russians are doing the same, but at the same time, it's so dangerous that kind of the... Uh, early UN agrees that this needs to be contained and controlled so they create an underground organizations which is made up of people from all the allied countries including the Russians supposedly working together to, to find those things and control them so a bit of a Delta Green X-Files sort of thing while at the same time knowing that your team, so the concept of your team is that you got a Russian person, an American person, an English person, a French person, a German person, and so on. They're working together, but at the same time, they might have a different <laughs> agenda. <laughs> and what's quite nice is that the rules of Cold City really include the idea players tell the, the game master uh, whether or not and to what extent They trust the others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the more you trust someone, the more you get bonuses for different things, but the more likely it could come back in your face if the person decides to betray you. I want to do something like that. I want to have a, a, a good feel of the era. So I'm, I'm doing research about that. I want a kind of the third man. It's in Austria. It's not in Berlin, but you know, it's kind of noir. I try to mention actual historical event at the same time. Do a spy story where, where people betray can betray each other. And and also the idea is that we will play in English, but maybe I will record it. And I will do a thing which is called Gromlo. It's a satiat of thing, I don't know the English word, where basically you pretend to speak a language by saying random things which sound like a language. <laughs> so I'm gonna play with the fact that the Russian mind no English, but you might not know German and uh, and so on. So trying to to do things. So I want also a specific set of of players. Uh, I want an English player. I'm trying to have a set of nationalities to to mix up the table and, yeah. and play with that. So yeah, I'm reading really the innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. That's a difficult setup you want to. But I, it cannot provide very interesting conversation, I guess. <laughs> but it would be a. a, a 
something short. But yeah, that's it. So we're gonna, I'm going to work on it. Interested? Yeah, come in. Any final words for our podcast? Thank you, guys. Try the Japanese restaurants. Tell us which one you like. See you for episode three. And in the meantime, can you come back? <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll come back for episode three. But in the meantime, I recommend they have good games. Sure. Good games, guys. Good games. Music for this podcast included Robot Pants by Bad Rono, Dream One by Tonality Star, Sugary Sweet by Pepper Code, Pizza Soda y Rock and Roll by Los Margaritos, Lo Fi Hero by The Zombie Dandies, and of course Soltao Franco or Team Song by Bonded Roll. All songs available for free download on the freemusicarchive.org. Please make sure to check all those artists on the freemusicarchive.org. All songs available for free download. Holy! 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 So to friend we make a shame. Holy! 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 Nós é tipo bem Jesus, todo mundo a gente ama Ainda mais se for gatinha, rola até levar pra cama A gente topa tudo, sapatão e bigodudo Na hora do piriri, cai em mim outra vesti Vai batuque! Rolê! 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 Solta o frango e vem com a gente Rolê! 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 Solta o frango e vem com a gente